So over the past few years, there have been a lot more channels focusing on DIY car builds. And as you know, I'm one of those channels. Now, me and another YouTuber, Chris from bs for build we do these car rebuilds every year. We decided to give ourselves a challenge. And when he presented me with this car, this is a uh, BMW Z4 that had some accident damage, I said, well, it is a challenge, but it's not really because it's basically bodywork. It's basically just a repair job. But then Chris said, we have to do it in four days. So if you guys are new to the channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoy this entire build because this is gonna be a build like you've never seen and like I've never seen before. I'm not gonna do it myself. Uh, I'm definitely not equipped to do that. I have a friend. This guy, yeah, you, you know him. He is Chris from a channel called BS for Build. Definitely check him out. He's doing a lot of really interesting stuff. He brings cars like this back from the brink and back from death. Is this car dead? Uh, right now, yeah. Mm -hmm. You bought this car. I didn't buy this car for once. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I don't know anything about it. I didn't know that wheel was <laughs> smashed in. <laughs> okay. All four wheels look straight online. I bought it sight unseen from Texas. I knew it had previous flood damage, but it was running and driving. So my guess was it flooded and then somebody fixed it and yeah. then drove it into something. Uh -huh. um, and then Intentionally, let, perhaps. And then today, yeah, which we'll show later, we found out there seems to be a little bit of other damage. So yeah. This car may be on its third salvage life, and uh, that's okay. I, I knew nothing about it. Bought mm -hmm. it and uh, bought it in Texas online for thirty-two hundred dollars, and shipped it to your shop. Here. So this is okay. Thirty-two hundred bucks for a 2013? 2013 Z4. 2013 Z4. Forty thousand miles. S drive. To whatever, whatever that 20, means. Twenty twenty-eight. S is for slow. <laughs> S, S is S is for super <laughs> sweet. That's a problem though. So I think the game plan for this entire build is going to be. Uh, it's gonna be very, very simple. So we have bodywork. Make the car beautiful again. Make the car very beautiful. Simple. Sort out that suspension. Mm -hmm. Sort out the suspension all over the car. We have to lower it. Yep. Wheels and tires. Yep. And paint. And a new a body kit. Okay, so this is basically, this is a baby Supra. This is a this is the MK5 Supra prototype. It's right off the line. This has a four cylinder in it's there. It's a Japanese version. It's, it's a fine. Japanese version. Yeah. You can't get these in America. I think it's time to get to work taking this thing apart. Yeah, we should tear it down and see what we're really looking we, at. Because we don't have a lot, like that, I just rattled off six things that are like major things and we have like four days, we literally have four days because- we, Four days including today, so Including yeah. today because then Chris turns into a pumpkin and has to go to Disney World and I have to do other things like on my other cars. So um, we really only have, we're not like, Fast and louding it like this no, is this really is a, four, truly, this is yeah. a real four day it's build. It's a four day build. If the paint isn't painted on the car and drying over the fourth night, then we have lost. Uh, okay, let's let's get to work. All right. Yeah, we don't have any time. All right, now that we got the wheel off, we can see a little bit more of the damage. And there is a lot of damage on this car. No, that's a lot of damage. So this car has been salvaged more than once. You can see that not only has it been hit right here, but if we look back here, it's, uh, yeah, this is not exactly OEM BMW quality. But we're gonna focus on this. This is the bulk of the damage. And as you can see, the wheel has seen better days. It's not supposed to be able to do this. So if we look back here, you can see that the control arm is 100% just snapped right off, which is a good and bad thing. It's a bad thing because that means that the only thing keeping this on the car is the steering tie rod end 
which is probably bent or uh, something. It needs to be replaced or at least adjusted. Uh, and also this is most likely bent. Uh, I don't think it's supposed to have this sharp of an angle. But we have both of these control arms. We're gonna replace both these control arms. And also we're gonna replace this. This is the uh, shock. And this is most likely bent as well because it's not supposed to be able to take that much lateral strain. I definitely know that the uh, strut top is not in good shape. But this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be doing all the mechanical work and basically making this thing as good as a performer as it can be. And Chris is gonna make it look as good as it can be. Uh, so he's gonna be doing all the cosmetic work. And what he's gonna be doing is installing this body kit. Now this is a Duraflex body kit. You got it on eBay and it looks pretty good. It looks like the M series something. I'm not actually sure what it's supposed to look like, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, it does have a very racing look and here's the back bumper. You can see it has those dual exhaust ports and a rear diffuser, which makes it look a lot more aggressive. We also have some side skirts and a rear lip and it's gonna, it's gonna look a lot better than this. This actually looks very, very sad for itself, but the overall shape of the car is something I enjoy quite a bit. Now this does have the four cylinder engine and it is turbocharged. So we're gonna try to get as much power as we can out of that with a tuner. We're gonna make sure it runs good. It's gonna be a lot of time lapse, a lot of working and uh, probably a few late nights, but this thing should be awesome by the end of the week. All right guys, check this out. This is the old control arm, obviously with a uh, little self-clearancing method right there. And this is the new control arm and that is brand new. Now we also did take out this other control arm. I'm not sure if these are, these have special names or anything, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that we replace these because there's a lot of weird bends and if any of these is kinked, then that's basically gonna mean that we're gonna have a uh, alignment issue later on. So we got a new one of these. This one sort of looks weird, but it is brand new. So it's gonna work. Now all we have to do is put this back on here and then we put the wheel on and I think we can take a test drive. All right, this is ready to go on the road. And we just connected the battery. We just connected this guy right here. Don't know why it was missing, but Chris, do you think it's gonna start? Yes. Okay, maybe you should start it. Okay, I've never done this before. Okay, so, so it's just like any other car. You have to flip this up or? No, 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 you don't have to do oh, anything with that. That's a parking that. brake, that's why that's, that's not that. Yep. Listen to that cold start. Service overdue. Oh no. Actually, can you uh, can you cycle the wheel from left to right? All right. The other way, yep. Okay, that's looking good. Straighten out. That's straight-ish. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Good enough for government work? Feels good. Yeah, it feels good. Okay, uh, let's go for a drive. Okay. Ooh. I'm sitting on the floor. How's the brakes feel? Good. Good. Safety-wise, I feel pretty confident. Where are we on, uh, 
coolant temp. It'll tell us on the computer once we overheat. Okay, cool. If it's anything like Oh, well, I mean, we'll know since uh, the coolant will be shooting out. Oh, it's hmm. doing its lovely BMW mirrors thing. It's driving straight. I mean, no, so, it's not. No? No. Okay, well. Let's see, how, let's see how bad it is. Oh my God, all right. <laughs> You can, you can hear the turbo though. Yeah. I mean, other than that, like it, it's okay. So it's not, sometimes your alignment's so bad, it's real squirrely, it's back and forth and it's kind mm -hmm. of scary. Yeah. This is just like, okay, it's off and it's consistent. So you just hold the wheel straight and you're fine. Well, I say straight, you know. I wouldn't want to take this on the highway or anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. That sounds like a lot of stuff going on and no speed. So slow. It is very slow. I I'm I think that there's a there's a boost leak. You just turn around and go back. Okay. Yeah, I think there's a boost leak there too. I haven't had a car go zero to forty that slowly ever. Well, it didn't want to go past thirty five hundred RPM. Yeah, it's like there's a it's like there's a Full full throttle. That was like. It's. Not, I mean, it sounds pretty good. It's, but it doesn't. Sounds like something's going wrong, though. It's. It's. Well, definitely something's going wrong. It's. It's, it's very very slow. So we're gonna have to figure that out. I'll. I'll figure that out. I think it I might have. Know, I want to see from a dead stop, like, what, if this is really that slow or if. I, I, Jesus. So okay. Much weird with this. Okay. Yeah. No, hold on. Engine malfunction. Yeah. Engine it. operating at reduced output. That's limp mode. That's limp you. mode. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. We're back at the shop and it's a beautiful day. So let's keep on wrenching. Well, okay. There seem to be some issues with this car, namely that the engine isn't running as fast as, well, as powerful. It's not running as good. I'm a little loopy. This, uh, this, today is, today is, Today's an unusual sort of day. So the engine is not running good. It's running quite bad. And we're trying to figure out what that problem might be. So what we did is we looked into the electrical system and we found this. This is, uh, I don't know if this is stock. This does not really look all that stock and uh, doesn't really look all that safe, but everything here sort of checks out. And we cleaned off the grounds. There's a ground strap right here. And we made sure that that went down to bare metal. It had a good metal to metal connection. Could be the fuse box, but as you can see, we bought all new fuses and we replaced every single fuse in the car. So that should be sorted. I also made sure that it had uh, good contact. So I used this contact cleaner. So we should be good there. But when we looked underneath the car, it really didn't look all that great because if you come underneath here and you look at the charge pipe for the turbo, uh, you can see that there is a gap right there uh, on the turbo on both sides, on both the inlet and outlet. So it's not actually connected to the turbo, which means that when the turbo makes the boost to make the uh, car go fast, car doesn't go fast. The boost doesn't actually get to the engine. So that is a bad situation. I think I found something and this is probably why we're not getting any boost and why the car is in limp mode. This is the pipe that goes from the turbo to the intercooler and this carries charged air. And obviously this is supposed to go right here, but it doesn't, so it's broken. This is plastic and it probably over some heat cycles just got brittle and broke. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some epoxy, we're gonna clean this up, we're gonna put some epoxy, then plastic weld it and hopefully she should see some boost. A lot of boost. So I put some epoxy over here. I will be doing some plastic welding uh, to make sure that this does not boost leak. But while I was doing that, Chris, 
who's on his phone, is uh, <laughs> he was busy doing the back end. And take a look at this. This is the Duraflex kit. I, is this like an M kit, M uh, type bumper? Or? No, it's just their own style, the Duraflex style kit. This, this looks really good. It's, it's, it looks really tough. And I can't wait to see when this thing is lowered on the ground, better wheels, and it, it, it's gonna look really good, especially with that lip spoiler. Uh, actually, you wanna, you wanna try out the lip spoiler, see how that looks? It's not a lip spoiler. It's not a lip spoiler? Yeah. Where, 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 where does it go? On the truck. Let's, let's, let's put it on. I wanna see what it looks like. It might go like this. I don't know, that could be upside down, backwards. Does it, does it go like that? that? That doesn't make any sense. It's really floppy. What about, yeah. oh, oh, you know what? I think it, it hangs off the side, no? Let me, let me go look at the instructions. Does this, e go, <laughs> is go, this go, even go on the car? Let's go Batman car. So oh, perfect, perfect. Hot boy. That is, that is a mustache on that car if I've ever seen limo, one. Oh, that's limo uh, radar, limo satellite. Free mustache rides, everyone. Look at that. This thing looks so emo. <laughs> okay, uh, change of plans. So apparently these have stands and here's one of the stands right here. You can see that there's a threaded section right here. That's supposed to thread into the spoiler. Problem is when you try to thread it into the spoiler, these screws are smaller than this stand. And in order to put the stand in the spoiler, you have to, we'll probably have to ream it out and do a bunch of no, stuff. It's like not even possible because there's actually a metal Oh, um, female threaded part that's built into the fiberglass here. You can kind of see it right in there. Mm -hmm. So you'd be talking about cutting this thing, a huge chunk of it out to, to reconstruct it. But more importantly, like, so basically it's these stands and it sits this thing up a couple inches off here. Right. And uh, when I looked at it in the picture uh, from the one I bought, it was carbon fiber. This is pure fiberglass. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty heavy. heavy. Yeah. And uh, I just wasn't really digging the look once I got here. It's a little bit too Batman. So I was pretty sure I wasn't going to use it anyways, but now that we can't mount it to the car, yeah. Okay, uh, I have an idea of what we can do. Perfect. <laughs> I think it really looks at home on this car. Yeah, that, that's, that's not bad. Have you ever found a, a, a Ferrari spoiler for cheaper than free? Uh, I have not, and they were not uh, this Batman looking, so I guess that's, that's where it's going to go. Batman drives a Ferrari sometimes. Batman never, that, that is not, that's not true. Whoops, it's okay. Just a bunch of electrical wires down here. Nothing to worry about. So, there we oh. go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that rips. All right. There we go. Awesome. We, got we have back. our boost. <laughs> Stellar got our groove back. All right, so. There we go. So that, that was it. That was just. Well, it wasn't it, just. It was just the fact that the engine didn't have air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turns out engines need air. Welcome everyone to day two. Actually, I think it's day three. Day four. Okay. So Chris is actually correct. This is day four because we spent the last two days getting this car ready, troubleshooting some issues, and also doing a lot of body work. You can see the body's not on the car, but Chris was hard at work doing all the sanding and all that stuff that I can't be bothered to do. But this I can be bothered to do, and here's what we did yesterday or two days ago. I can't, I don't even know what day it is. So we went to the BMW dealership and we had to buy one of these. Uh, this is a turbo intake pipe. And also we had to fix this because both pipes were actually cracked. They're made of plastic that gets brittle with heat cycles. And also this car wasn't in the best shape to begin with. So we got this on, that, that took a long time. And we got that on and we fixed it and we had to refix it because our fix wasn't exactly good enough. But I'm getting out into the weeds. It works, it boosts, it has enough power. We're gonna have a late night today and this car is gonna get done. This car is gonna look a lot different by the end of today, by the time we go home and go to sleep. Not notice, notice he did not say better, he said different, which is good. This is, this is, this is a man who knows how to temper expectations. <laughs>
Oh, oh my God. Look at how good that looks. So obviously it's not gonna be 100% perfect because this car got hit on that side, but it looks pretty darn sweet. Now what Chris is doing right now is he's just fitting up the side skirts. It's a pretty good fit as far as fiberglass aftermarket parts go because we just have this, it uh, just clips into here and then the side skirt just clips into there. We will be doing some uh, screws, I believe into the metal, but we're gonna make it nice and neat. The same goes for the rear bumper, but while he does that and makes the car nice and pretty, I'm gonna be doing this. This is a set of BR series coilovers from my friends at BC Racing. So the BR series of coilover is adjustable both in dampening and ride height. And you can adjust the ride height without changing the spring rate, which is really awesome. Also, they look pretty good. And the valving and the spring rate is exactly what this car needs to be lower and more responsive and higher performance and all that stuff. Plus it has these, uh, cool little isolators to make sure we don't get any rubbing or any weird squeaks. In addition, the backs have the springs separate from the struts. So this is gonna be kind of interesting to install. So I'll uh, show you how that goes, but I'm getting a little antsy. Let's put that on the car. That looks pretty good. I have to say that looks way better than the truck gap we had before. Now this is the lowest setting on the BC Racing coilovers and this one needs a bit of an alignment. What do you think? Well, the truck's not closed too, so it makes it look higher. That's called a hood. Sorry, it's late. Okay, the hood isn't closed and that's why there's a bit of a gap, but uh, it also needs a little bit of adjustment from the camber area, but we can adjust that with the coilovers. Now, if you take a look at what the difference is between this and the rear, you can see a huge gap right here and over there, it's very, very minimal. And if you take a look on the other side, it is basically the same thing. It's actually a really big gap here. I don't know why that is, but we have to jump on the back and the back is actually a little bit more complicated than the front. On second thought, that's not what we're gonna be doing. The coilovers are gonna have to wait. We're getting the paint prepped right now. Well, we're getting the car ready for paint. And Chris, well, what- We're getting the car ready for paint. You're holding the camera. Everywhere you look. What is happening? Uh, we're cleaning every body panel down with wax and grease remover to remove any contaminants before we sand. If you don't do that and then you sand, the sandpaper will just dig it into the paint even further. So we'll clean it up, sand, then wax and grease remover one more time and then we're ready to put it in the booth. And we got a booth over there and uh, that is courtesy of these guys. Andrew, you know him and you love him. And Eric, uh, he's, he, he's better than uh, just a tuner. He's also a, he builds those weird flesh colored thing. Okay, anyway, uh, so. <laughs>
Oh, B is for build and B is for busted up paint jobs. So we got a little bit of tiger striping. You can kind of catch it on camera right here, side to side to side. Last night, these were the parts that were super puddled up and, and still very wet. Um, Tiger striping comes from a, a, a myriad of different reasons, but um, anyways, the way to go is to paint like this, and then to come back and paint like this, which is what I did, which is why the tiger stripes are going that way. It's super annoying to me though, and it doesn't have to be there. So we're still within the respray time. We have a little bit of time this morning to spare uh, since we're staying with the matte color. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is mix up some paint, clean this panel up real nice, and then I'm gonna do a nice even coat side to side, front to back, across this thing, get rid of those tiger stripes. Guys, take a look at this. Now this is a BMW Z4. I really like how this turned out. And we only took well, three days, really. Eh? Are you, are you saying something, Chris? Fantastic. Fan, it, it, it is fantastic, that's right. So this is the Z4 that we've been working on for the past five days with three days working and I didn't get any sleep and Chris definitely didn't get any sleep. And it looks great. Look at these. Koenig wheels they fit perfectly and just the right amount of stretch and yeah look at look at that that fitment is great this Duraflex kit on point now with every fiberglass kit you're gonna have to do a little bit of modification but the fitment was great on the front end obviously this car has had some issues with its checkered past let's just call it that and we fixed it as much as we could and it's looking fantastic now I'm gushing about this car because I really love the look of it and I love the color. This Hockenheim silver metallic, which Chris did in matte because, well, we didn't have enough time to do clear, but it also looks really good in matte. And I might do this as my color for my SL55 AMG. But right now I'm really excited to get this thing on the road to see if we fix some boost leaks, to see if this is the performer that we set out to build almost, well, about a week ago. Rumors <laughs> here! <laughs> on the road? We're on the road. Yeah. After three days, it's it feels pretty good. Well, today's the fourth day. Well, yeah. After four days. I have no idea what day it is. <laughs> Today is Saturday, man. We're on a weekend cruise mm. in our Z4. I feel good. I feel good. All right, here we go. Yeah. We're going to rip it around this corner. We're just going to throw it in. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's not bad, dude. That's that new that's suspension, new yeah. tires. That's that life, man. That's good. The ride quality is actually really good. We have this on full hard. Full hard, and it's, yeah. it's actually very nice. I mean, yeah. you can feel you, you feel the road like a, a more sporty car. Yeah, well, we also have bigger wheels and uh, more grippy tires. Better tires. Yeah, so it actually feels really, really nice. We improved it dramatically with just those parts. Dramatically. And considering that this car was absolutely undrivable when we started. <laughs> it was really bad. I mean, we, could, we couldn't even, we needed- corner! Whoa! Oh! oh. <laughs> You can hear that turbo now. Yeah, dude, it sounds great. This dude, is like I didn't think I was this ever, is like a car, a yeah, car, I, I, car. I was gonna say I didn't think I'd ever say this, but yeah, somebody could drive this to school every day, <laughs> or, or work or whatever. Man, I I would love to autocross this car. Wait, let's do this corner again a little, uh, one more time. Okay. The best in the braking entry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna set a goal to knock your camera off its tripod. Here we Let's go. Let's do it. Oh my God. Almost, almost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that is going to be it for this episode, this entire build, actually. And uh, this is looking really good. Now, I can't take any credit for making this as pretty as it is. That goes to... You help with the body work. I, I Andrew like, help with the body work. Eric help with the body work. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I did a little bit, but this was, this was forged in your mind. This is your creation, okay? So uh, this Hockenheim metallic silver, silver metallic... It looks really good, and I, I like I said earlier in the video, I want this on some of my other cars. This is just a really it, good. I think it looks really good. Yeah, yeah. It looks this is great. one of my, my my favorite new paint colors. Yeah, yeah. So especially with the gloss black or not, actually satin black accents on this car, it just kind of sets it off, and it just it just looks amazing. And we basically made a new Supra for like three thousand dollars. Well, I came out to about four thousand dollars. I think the cheapest one we found in town here was over sixteen thousand. Yeah, yeah. We actually looked on Craigslist to see what we can find uh, as far as a twenty thirteen Z four. We can, like, we can, like twenty grand. We yeah. can flip this for a twelve thousand dollar profit. I mean, not bad for four days work, huh? Not, not bad for four days. That was a lot of fun. There was a lot of sleepless nights, and uh, a lot of work went into this. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we do this stuff every year. We actually have a. Um, sort of series, like a running series going on. Uh, first year we did a $1,500 rear wheel drive challenge. We went out to uh, California and we did all sorts of weird stuff in the desert. It was fun. Yeah, and uh, last year we also did a $500 uh, Ford Explorer uh, drift car. And we also jumped it and we uh, and Adam LZ came in. And that was a lot of fun. So I think next year we're gonna be doing a uh, sort of uh, head to head. Head to head. I, I think we could work against each other because um, we have a little bit of a rivalry going on, you know, since we're, since we're sort of in the same plane of, of YouTube. Uh, I think we should, we should do, uh, who's the first to a million subscribers? I know, I knew you were going to say yeah, that. Are yeah. we doing that? I think we're going to do that. Okay. All right, so, so, race to a million is on. Yeah, pray, pay, pay, uh, press, uh, press And, and Freddie will put a link to my channel in the description so you can just yeah. really easily click that link yeah, and exactly. go subscribe, no problem. Don't, don't do not that. Uh, see you at the finish line, definitely, buddy. Oh, no, definitely subscribe to his channel. And unsubscribe uh, to his. Yeah, unsubscribe to mine. Subscribe to his twice. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button twice. That's that's the super subscribe. Um, <laughs> race to a million. Yeah, so uh, all Chris's uh, stuff will be in the link in the description below. Uh, BC Racing, uh, Nitto Tires, and uh, everything else we used on this car will be in the link in the description below. Check it out. Uh, it's really good stuff, and it made this car look absolutely amazing. So uh, I think that's going to be it. It's uh, it's a little chilly. I'm wearing a t-shirt. Cool. I'm like sitting here doing this. I'm wearing a t-shirt for I'm some reason. Morgan, yeah. yeah, it's like 50 degrees. So uh, until next time, this is me reminding you guys that on cars like this that look amazing uh, when you put in a lot of work over four days, you guys need to wrench every day. Isn't that right? Yes. Yes.